In this module on current electricity, we are going to discuss about introduction about current electricity, electron drift and mobility, temperature dependence and power, combination of resistors, combination of cells, and Kirchhoff's rules. This will be followed by practice questions. Let us have a first hand introduction about current electricity. We know current I is equal to Q by T, that is the total number of charge divided by time. And Ohm's law here voltage or potential is directly proportional to the current in a conductor. This can also be given as V equal to Ri where R stands for resistance. R can be expressed as R is equal to rho into L by A where rho is nothing but the resistivity which means the resistance is directly proportional to length. However, it is inversely proportional to area. Now let us understand current density. Current density is nothing but the total current flowing per unit area. We know V equal to Ri. This can also be written as V equal to rho I L A. However, we know V is equal to El, that is electric field into length. Thus, we get E equal to rho into I by A. I by A can be written as J, which is nothing but current density. So, J can be written as E by rho or J can also be written as sigma E, where sigma is the conductivity which can be represented as 1 by rho or 1 by resistivity. Let us understand important points about drift of electrons and mobility. If we consider all the electrons in a system, their average velocity will be zero since their directions are random in nature. The presence of an electric field E, the electrons will get accelerated and this acceleration is given by A is equal to minus E, E by M, that is field by mass. This we have derived from the basic relationship E equal to F by E. Tau is the average time between collision. This is also called as relaxation time. And drift velocity Vd is represented as Vd equal to A into T. That is acceleration into time. So substituting minus E, E by M for acceleration and tau for time, we get Bd equal to minus E, E tau by M and current density is represented by the formula J equal to N E square tau E by M. We know current density equal to sigma E, therefore conductivity can be written as N E square tau by M. Now let us understand mobility. Mobility is nothing but the magnitude of drift velocity per unit electric field. This is represented by mu, mu equal to Vd by E, that is drift velocity per unit electric field. On substituting Vd equal to E E tau by M, we get mobility equal to E tau by M. Now let us understand temperature dependence of resistivity. Resistivity at a particular temperature is given by resistivity at standard conditions into 1 plus alpha T minus T naught, where alpha refers to temperature coefficient of resistivity. And alpha value differs for each and every given material. For metals, alpha is positive, that is, resistivity increases with increase in temperature. For semiconductors, alpha is negative, which means resistivity decreases with increase in temperature. Now, let us understand electrical power. The power required in an electrical circuit to have current is given by P is equal to I square R. Now let us understand electrical power. 
the power in a circuit is given by i square r this can also be written as v square by r and also power dissipated in a transmission line is given by pc equal to i square rc or pc equal to p square rc by b square thus power loss in transmission is inversely proportional to v square or voltage thus if the voltage in a transmission line is high the power loss will be less now let us understand combination of resistors if the resistors are connected in series then the current is constant but voltage varies thus equivalent resistance is given by r1 plus r2 plus up to rn that is the total number of resistors however if the resistors are connected in parallel then v is constant that is the voltage is constant and current varies thus the reciprocal of equivalent resistance is given by reciprocal of individual resistances now let us understand the relationship between cell emf and internal resistance here ir equal to epsilon minus ir or i equal to epsilon by r plus r where epsilon stands for cell potential or cell emf capital r stands for resistance of an external resistor and small letter r stands for internal resistance now let us understand combination of cells cells in series the cells are connected in series in opposite polarity that is positive of a first cell is connected to the negative of the second cell then equivalent potential is given by summation of the individual potentials however if the connection is of same polarity type that is the positive of one cell is connected to the positive of the other cell then it is given by epsilon 1 minus epsilon 2 where epsilon 1 is greater than epsilon 2 and r equivalent equivalent resistance in cells connected in series is given by r1 plus r2 now let us understand the cells connected in parallel in this case the reciprocal of equivalent resistance is given by 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 that is the summation of individual re reciprocal of individual resistances also epsilon equivalent by r equivalent equal to epsilon 1 by r1 plus epsilon 2 by r2 now let us understand kirchhoff's rule there are two rules in kirchhoff's rule one is junction rule and another one is loop rule case of junction rule it states that at any junction the sum of the currents entering the junction is equal to the sum of the currents leaving the junction as per the loop rule the algebraic sum of changes in potential around any closed loop involving resistors and cell in the loop is zero now let us get on to question number 1 a storage battery of emf 8 volt and internal resistance 0.5 ohm is being charged by a 120 volt dc supply using a series resistor of 15.5 ohms what is the terminal voltage of the battery during charging what is the purpose of having a series resistor in the charging circuit the terminal voltage of the battery can be calculated by using the formula eb plus ir so the net voltage in the circuit is edc minus eb edc is the voltage of the dc supply so thus we get 120 minus 8 equal to 112 volt now the net resistance of the circuit is external resistance plus internal resistance because it is in series hence it is 16 ohms so the net current in the circuit is i equal to net voltage by net resistance 
which is equal to 112 by 16 that is equal to 7 amps. Now the terminal voltage is 8 volt plus 7 into 0 0.5 that is V equal to IR we know it. So we are using the same formula to calculate the excess voltage at the terminal. So 8 plus 7 into 0 0.5 that is equal to 11.5 volt. Here the series resistor is used to limit any excess current and hence ensure that charging is smoother. Question number 2. Two wires of equal length, one of aluminium and other of copper have the same resistance. Which of the two wires is lighter? The relevant data is useful for calculation is as mentioned here. Now first let us calculate the resistance of copper wire and then resistance of aluminium wire. On rearranging this formula we get area of copper by area of aluminium equal to density of copper by density of aluminium. So this gives us the value 1.72 by 2.63. Mass of a substance by density of water equal to density of a substance into volume by density of water. So this gives us mass of a substance by density of water equal to relative density of a substance into length into area. Why we are putting length into area? Volume can be expressed as the product of length and area. And using relevant formula like mass by density, we get mass of copper by mass of aluminium. That is the ratio of mass of copper to that of aluminium equal to 2.16. This indicates aluminium is much lighter than copper. Question number 3, calculate the value of the resistance R in the circuit given here, so that the current in the circuit is 0 0.2 amps. Also find out the potential difference between the points B and E. Now first of all, consider the loop B, E, D, C. Here B, C and D, C are in series and hence equivalent resistance is equal to 15 ohms. And now BD and BE are parallel because both the terminals converge at the same point. Also BCD is parallel to BE. Hence 30 ohm, 10 ohm and 15 ohm are all in parallel. Thus the effective resistance can be calculated as 5 ohms. Now the net effective resistance is R2 which is equal to 5 plus R plus 15 which is 20 plus R and we know current equal to 0 0.2 amps and also we know V net the net voltage equal to 8 minus 3 which is equal to 5 this is as per Kirchhoff's loop rule. So V net equal to I into R2. So this gives us R equal to 5 ohms. Now the voltage or potential difference between points B and D is I into phi that is IR. This gives us 1 volt. Now question number 4, the given circuit R1 is equal to 4 ohms, R2 equal to R3 equal to 15 ohms, R4 equal to 30 ohms and the voltage or potential difference equal to 10 volt. Calculate the equivalent resistance of the circuit and current in each resistor. First let us calculate equivalent resistance of the circuit. Here R2, R3 and R4 are in parallel 
and hence the equivalent resistance is given by 1 by R234 equal to 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3 plus 1 by R4. On calculation, we get the equivalent resistance as 6 ohms. Now, R1 and this equivalent resistance R234 are in series and hence the net resistance is 10 ohms. Now, let us calculate current through each resistor. Through R1, the current will be equal to 1 amp and we know potential drop across R1 is equal to 4 volt that is by calculating V dash equal to I1 R1. Thus the voltage across R2, R3 or R4 is V double dash which is again 6 volt. This gives us the relevant current values. I2 equal to 6 by 15, I3 equal to 6 by 15 and I4 equal to 6 by 30. Why we have calculated potential drop across R1? This is because R2, R3 and R4 are in parallel and voltage will not change for these circuits. However, the equivalent circuit consisting R1 and R234 are in series has the difference in voltage across it. Question number 5. A wire of 15 ohm resistance is gradually stretched to double its original length. It is then cut into two equal parts. These parts are then connected in parallel across a 3 volt battery. Find the current drawn from the circuit. We know resistance is equal to rho L by A. Thus, when the length is doubled, the new resistance will be equal to rho into 2L by A. However, there is no change in volume of the wire V. Thus, we get L into A equal to 2L into A dash. So, the new area is equal to half of the original area. Thus, the new resistance is equal to rho into 2L by 0.5A. This gives us 4 times the original resistance. That is, the new resistance is 4 times that of the original resistance. Thus, R dash equal to 60 ohms. However, if the wire is cut into two equal parts, then the resistance of each wire will be 30 ohms. Thus, effective resistance is 30 by 2, which is equal to 15 ohms. Why 15 ohms? Because these two resistors are connected in parallel. Now the current through it will be equal to 0.2 amps. Question number 6. Find the current in the given circuit. Consider the loop ABCFA first. Using Kitchoff rule, we get E1 plus I1 R1 minus I2 R2 minus E2 equal to 0. On calculation, we get the equation 1, 4 I1 equal to 3 I2 minus 1. In case of loop FCDEF, E2 plus I2 R2 plus I3 R3 minus E3 equal to 0. This gives us the equation 2, 3 I2 plus 2 I3 equal to 3. Also as per junction rule, I3 equal to I1 plus I2. Thus equation 2 becomes 5 I2 plus 2 I1 equal to 3. In solving equation 1 and 3, we get I2 equal to 7 by 13 amp, I1 equal to 2 by 13 amp and I3 equal to 9 by 13 amp.